There's no doubt, Washington, D.C. is an important place. But what happens in our nation's capital rarely gets its start there. The ideas, the innovation, the progress, all of that comes from the hardworking towns and cities, like right here in Midland, Texas. Across America, in any of the hundreds of communities that support the production, refinement, and distribution of energy, American energy is a cornerstone for our way of life. It runs our economy. It keeps our country safe. It powers our ability to innovate and do more than we ever dreamed possible. Over the last year, all of us have seen why energy policy really matters. We've seen it in our own lives, in our communities, and around the world. For decades, Washington, D.C. has debated policy pathways for reliable, affordable energy for everyone. But while the debate waged on, our industry stayed focused on delivering solutions. That's why I'm here today in Midland. The millions of men and women in America's natural gas and oil industry work hard every day and night to deliver reliable, affordable energy. And we stand ready to answer the call to produce more energy and to make it better, safer, and cleaner. But we need support from Washington. Either we strengthen our energy security or we become increasingly reliant on unstable regions of the world for our energy. The solution is here, but only if we chart a path for it to succeed. At API, we have a plan that champions the people who are innovating and advancing solutions for our energy future. It's a plan in three parts, make, move, and improve. It all starts with make, because the basics of America's energy challenges are pretty straightforward. When it comes to energy, Americans are suffering under the biggest supply imbalance in over a generation, between what we have and what we need to live our lives. And the government isn't doing enough to lessen it. Under the Biden administration, our government has leased fewer federal acres for oil and natural gas production than any other president since World War II, and has suggested no offshore leasing for years. That's despite the years it takes to plan, invest, permit, and develop energy, and projections that America and the world will need oil for decades to come. Experts say demand for global oil and natural gas will increase tremendously over the next 30 years. In 2023 alone, it will increase by 2.7 million barrels a day. And if America doesn't meet that demand, then that demand will be met by other countries that may not share our values or be reliable partners, countries that don't work to protect their environment and their communities. So the first step to solving energy challenges is to harness the full potential of American natural gas and oil production and do it now by increasing access on and offshore. Our industry is already taking on the challenge, but the greatest achievements will require Washington to work alongside us too. Producing more energy counts for very little if we can't get it where it needs to go. And that's why we need to focus on how we move energy to where it's needed most. Today, it often takes more time and money to get permission to build a pipeline than it takes to actually construct the pipeline itself. And the consequences are real. Americans in New England sometimes pay up to eight times more for energy than people in Appalachia because the government won't approve a pipeline to move natural gas to states like Connecticut, Rhode Island, and Massachusetts. We need our government to greenlight more pipelines to safely move our energy across the U.S. and more terminals to let ships bring our energy around the world. So let's do it. Let's invest in energy infrastructure, streamline the review process, and remove needless bottlenecks so we can harness the full potential of American energy. This industry is filled with so much potential, not just to meet demand, but to meet demand in ways that are safe for our environment. We've already created groundbreaking emissions reduction technologies and more are on the way. Americans agree 
that taking care of this amazing land and reducing emissions is important. The question is how do we work to improve together? It's not regulation alone, it's innovation. It's science and skill. It's innovators like the men and women who work here, whose ingenuity powered the shale revolution. By replacing much of the coal use with natural gas to make electricity, America lowered its CO2 emissions in the power sector, more than any single one of Washington's climate policies ever has. We've reduced our CO2 emissions to some of the lowest levels in a generation, all while demand and consumption have continued to rise. We're innovating in our production processes to slash methane emissions intensity, a potent greenhouse gas, and we're working every day to find ways to bring them down even further. Not only can we lower U.S. emissions, but we can also capture some of the remaining emissions. To do that, we need stronger support for the implementation of carbon capture. And what about new fuels like hydrogen? Recent studies have shown that new fuels coming online show great promise in further meeting growing demand while also reducing emissions. We can fix this together. America has enough resources to supply ourselves and our allies for decades to come. This wasn't always the case. For decades, presidents of every political party have put a premium on producing more energy in America to make our country more self-sufficient. They know it's not just good for our country, but for the world. Yet for some reason, policymakers in Washington are choosing another path, one with real consequences. Now is the time for Washington to help. Our industry is ready to do the work to make, move, and improve American energy. The solution is here, in America.